we are in an aircraft repair shop of Air France Industries. As you can see, it is not exactly uh, like the LOCAD office. And today it's a pleasure for me to be with Jacques Dauvergne. So Jacques, could you tell us a little bit about what you were doing uh, before joining Air France? Oh, I've been working for Air France since uh, several years now. Uh, in the past, I have uh, been in charge of very operational domain, like uh, managing the AC-20 maintenance fleet. So it was a huge operational domain. I have been in charge also of a strategic project, a transformation of full department, but uh, 1,000 people. And also I have been in charge of supporting operations. So it uh, was a more transversal role compared to the previous ones. And what are exactly, what is exactly your current role and your current missions at Air France Industries? Okay, since uh, around one year, I have been in charge of uh, building a supply chain directorate. Uh, in the past, the supply chain was completely mixed uh, within another department of Air France Industries. So the idea was to uh, put a focus on the supply chain itself. And then my role now is to build this global organization of Air France industry supply chain. I mean, and for a general audience, which is who is not necessarily people that are that specialize in aviation, could you tell us a little bit more about Air France Industries? I mean, because everybody knows Air France, the airline, uh, but what about Air France Industries? What is your mission? What what do you do exactly? Air France Industries and KLM ENM, as we are a group, is managing both the maintenance for the mother airlines, Air France, KLM, of course, I would say it is our first mission. But since several years, we have developed a huge range of contracts for third parties airlines. Uh, they are based all around the world and we are able to offer either maintenance for aircraft themselves, engine maintenance, as we can see in the shop today, or also supply chain support via component uh, maintenance domain or access to our inventory. And it's quite an extensive set of operations. And just to get some sort of, of orders of magnitude, how many, you know, what are we talking about? How many aircraft, what sort of, you know, what is the, the extent of the operations? For Air France KLM Group, uh, the number of aircraft we operate is uh, higher than 400 aircraft. We are talking about more than 1,000 flights per day, not per month, per mm -hmm. day. <laughs> And uh, regarding the third parties company we support, we're talking of about more than 200 companies. For those of us who are, I would say, um, uh, lucky enough to be, able, uh, to be able to enjoy some air travel, um, as, as passengers, um, we have all been confronted at some point, at least probably once in our lifetime, uh, with a delayed flight. And obviously, Companies are not doing that on purpose of delaying the flights. Uh, it is fairly, I would say, uh, it's, a, it's a fairly major inconvenience for passengers, but um, it is also fairly costly for the companies themselves. And uh, could you, you know, share some, some insights about what, are, what is exactly at stake with, uh, with, I would say, the, the supply chain that keeps all those aircraft in the air? Of course, if we have to delay a, a flight or cancel a flight, our first concern, of course, is the impact of our passenger. Because the customer experience is an, a disaster and very bad. So this is the main uh, concern we have. The other one, of course, is that it's going to create within our flight program a kind of cascading effect. Because, for example, if the first flight of the day is delayed, you can imagine that all the other flights during all the full day will be delayed. So it's a huge concern about reprogramming, I would say, the flights themselves. Of course, the cost for the company is very high. We have to pay first direct rem remedies to the customer. And of course, we know that we are going to have a lot of indirect cost uh, within the supply chain or within the maintenance uh, domain. And in order to, to maintain the aircraft, we need parts um, uh, and uh, cars also need parts, for example. Obviously, the, the, the parts, as we can see here for, for the aircraft, are quite a lot bigger, at least some of them. Uh, but what makes the aviation supply chain, I would say, quite different from, let's say, the automotive supply chain? Uh, each time we, are, we have tried in the past to, cover, uh, to, to compare sorry, our supply chain to any other supply chain, we have the feeling that our supply chain is very specific. First, the flow, the volume of demand is very low. If you compare our activity to manufacturing area, 
the number of demand is very low. It is also very difficult to make some forecasts. Forecasting models are very complex because we are not, uh, we have to develop, we have to manage, I would say, a maintenance program. And maintenance uh, is, is organized about preventive maintenance. Then maybe we can know what kind of parts we are going to use. But for curative maintenance, when there is something which happens, which was not scheduled, you have to be responsive to be able to provide the part within a very short period of time. One of our key topics is first that we operate 24 hours a day, seven days a week. And second point is that we have a time pressure on our shoulders. It's very, very difficult sometimes to source a part even during the weekend at midnight. You have to find the part for tomorrow at six in Paris or, or Amsterdam. So it's a big challenge for our teams. And for that, we have implemented some specific organization like a 24 hour sourcing desk, which operate anytime, anywhere. And we have to source the part anywhere in the world and provide it to Paris or Amsterdam or any station all around the world. What do you see as the biggest challenges for the aviation supply chain, you know, in general, and maybe the one of Air France Industries in particular? Of course, if you want to focus on the robustness, robustness of, of your operations, you, you may be forced to buy a lot of inventory. If you want to ensure 99% of any kind of parts on the aircraft, of course, uh, it will be very, very easy to buy hundreds of millions of parts. And this is currently the level of inventory we have. We are talking about more than 100, 200, 300 millions of spare parts. So uh, I would say the key challenge is to optimize the economics. It would be very easy to buy a, a huge amount of spares. And the key topic is how are you going to dimension your spares, comparing the level of service you want to achieve. This is, in fact, the, the one who, who may win the battle, I would say, will be the one who will be able to, to, uh, to have this smart algorithm who can optimize inventory level. It's a, it's a key issue for any airline in the world. And that is supposed to be the role of data and analytics and, and things where, that were supposed to be sold by enterprise software vendors since probably since the 80s. Um, where, where do you see the, the current state of, I would say, the aviation supply chain? And um, uh, if, we, if we were to go back a little bit in time, what was, you know, the sort of practice that you could observe in this industry maybe half a decade ago uh, before the advent of LOCAD, maybe from your vantage perspective at Air France? In fact, I would say that the, the world of the, the aviation and speci specifically in the maintenance area is quite is based on industrial culture. And the key point was to make the aircraft flying. And we're also very focused on regulations, conformity of parts, of course, flight safety is our key priority. So the first goal in the past was to ensure that the part uh, which is going to be fitted on the aircraft will be the right one with 100% level of quality. And then I would say the traditional culture of the supply chain was also traditional. And logistic was not, I would say, the key priority in terms of uh, investment and uh, smart tools and uh, softwares. So we have, in the last years, we have been, we have, uh, we have now completely um, aware that supply chain is a key uh, concern for succeeding in maintenance area. So we have moved our mind, and we know that that we have to move forward, forgetting the for, the, 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 the oldest model, the loi de Poisson model was uh, totally now uh, not appropriate to our concern. And we want to move uh, to a, a, a more, I would say, a, a, new, a new approach. We want to change completely our approach. The former one was completely obsolete. And so, I mean, more than half a decade ago, LOCAD and Air France started to, 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 to work together. And uh, I'm very grateful to be, to be there today with you. And uh, could you uh, describe in your own words the way you see the LOCAD initiative at Air France Industries? What is it about? In fact, uh, we have discovered uh, LOCAD a few years ago because LOCAD has started with our, one of our subsidiaries, uh, based in Germany anyway. And uh, we knew from then that it was a great experience in terms of uh, optimizing the supply chain. We knew also that uh, they have jointly created value 
specifically around the inventory management. So it was really a good opportunity for us to accelerate our transformation. And we knew, as I said before, that our model was a little bit obsolete. So it was very, uh, I would say, it was really a good opportunity for us to try to work with local and try to explain to them what are our concerns and to see what they could be able to provide. And, and also it was very interesting for us to have a new look on our supply chain, completely different from uh, what we have made in the past. I believe that the local approach to supply chain is relatively different, you know, unusual, certainly compared to the classic approach or the mainstream approach. Um, what surprised you the most about the way LOCAD, you know, operates with, uh, with Air France Industries? In fact, we have been very surprised by the fact that uh, LOCAD approaches our, our concern with completely uh, open-minded approach without any uh, standard model in their mind. Because typically, sometimes you may, you may ask a consulting company to uh, help you to manage your supply chain, but they come with an automotive model. And it doesn't work a lot <laughs> at all with our uh, concern. So it was very impressive to see how open-minded they can be. And also, uh, I was really impressed by our ability to deliver a customized solution uh, in a very eff efficient way, effective and efficient. It was really uh, short in terms of lead time and the lead delivery was uh, really uh, quick. And also the added value was really significant. So, so this new approach was a risk. We took a risk, but at the end of the day, I would say the result was really amazing. Thank you very much. And, and recently we, we renewed our partnership and we even expanded. Uh, what is your, your vision for, uh, I would say, the, the future of the supply chain at uh, Air France Industries? In fact, with LOCAD, what we are trying to do now is to build a roadmap. Uh, in the past, we were, we were trying to work together on specific initiatives, but there was no really coordination between them. So the idea together is now to create more and more value. Uh, we know that it was feasible to, uh, to, I would say, to align ourselves on the joint roadmap. And the idea is to really select together what are the pain points of the supply chain and where we can create more value. The idea is not to have a clear vision of what's it going to be within for the next years, but months after months or three months after six months, we can move create value, move to another topic, create value, move to another topic, create value. So it is completely different from the former approach we have, where anyone in the company, because we are a huge company, we like, would like to see a three years plan or five years plan and tell them how much value you are going to create every three months. This is not the idea. So at least Air France Industries has chosen this new approach accepting the risk to be agile instead of planning the next three or five years with a high level of uh, certainty. And I believe that in this, in this industry, there are a lot of companies that are putting forward, uh, you know, uh, very advanced and buzzwordish things like um, uh, machine learning or optimization algorithm. I believe that LOCAD is effectively doing that at, at Air France, but it's not that visible and what is your, your perspective about you know the, the future of the supply chain and the roles of those tools and um, what sort of perception will have you know people who work at France industry have of those tools what's what will it look like I mean if you could describe that I know it's a fairly abstract question but uh, what I'm getting at is that um, they are relatively advanced technologies, but do we, you know, expect every single people at, at the supply chain at Air France to become, you know, AI experts? Or what, what, what does it look like, you know, on a day-to-day -day basis? To be honest with you, in the past, we have tried to buy a, a very smart tool. I don't know. I'm not going to give you the name. And we have tried to train our people to be experts in statistics how they could manage uh, data, they can build up their own rules and try to simulate the forecast themselves. Then the ambition at that time was to have in our teams people who can become experts in forecasting and in statistics based on data. And, and, and we, we can admit now that it, was, it has been a failure. So the idea for the future is to leave this vision uh, 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 away from us and to, uh, to um, 
to partner with someone who is going to manage this complexity. We don't want to be experts in statistics or data or on uh, artificial intelligence. It's not our goal, it's not our vision. So the idea is to join with someone who can manage this area and, and we bring in our approach, our expertise in terms of uh, how maintenance is made, what are the key, uh, what is at stake, what is very important, and, and, and bring the, the intelligence of data on, I would say, on our own approach, based on our own expertise. But, but we don't want to become experts in interficial intelligence ourselves. Maybe as a, as a parting question, so with this new vision for the supply chain, I mean, obviously, making the, uh, all your processes completely safe from a slight safety perspective is a given so that will stay you know, in the future. So it's already incredibly safe and it will remain the same. But what, what do you see as the, the future added value for um, the airline clients of Air France Industries? You know, what is at stake in having a superior supply chain? Our airline clients have exactly the same concern as we have as an airline. So we know, we know perfectly what, what are their constraints. That's why also sometimes they select uh, Air France Industries as a supplier or KLM and &M. And uh, of course, the value for them, for example, we can offer access to our, to our inventory. If our inventory is well-sized as an optimized value, optimized amount of investment, of course, the cost for our customers is going to be lower. So we are going to be competitive, of course, of course as a supplier. But those airlines who trust Air France industry and KLM UNM to support them know that they are paying the lowest price on the market. When we are competitive, on, on one way we are competitive, on the other way, those airlines know that the, the parts are going, to, are going to be available at the right time, at the right place. But also the cost they pay for it, it's the right price. Of course, they would be obliged to invest by themselves uh, it was a, an alternate solution for them, but, but for them, again, it's, it's, it's more than 10 million, 20 million, 30 million dollars for maybe only a few number of aircraft. So we are talking about a huge amount of money. Thank you very much. So once again, it's a pleasure to be in uh, this um, aircraft engine repair facility from Air France Industries. Jacques, thank you very much. Thank you very much, Joanne.